All right, so this is where I'm at. I uh, cut all the crap out of the inside of this. Well, actually, I ran a milling bit straight down it. Cut it nice and round. Cleaned out all the crap in there. But anyways, I was doing this surface, and I wanted to show you. Uh, there's actually imperfections in this. Once I started sanding it down, you can see them. So we're going to get those out, make it nice and flat. But anyways, the other day my carburetor got loose. But I took off, i just give you an idea, say a millimeter of material here if you can see that's just because of the casting the way it looks but I cut it on the lathe back because <clears throat> there's like a, hold on a sec there's little cutouts in the carburetor and this actually when it went in there was space like this between the two so air would leak out. So I cut that back to fit in. So now it seats all the way in past the cuts that they made in the carburetor. So anyways, let me keep sanding this and I'll get back to it. All right, so I just wanted to show you what I use to clean out the inside of the ports on stuff. I use these on like one five scales and everything. But it is just a shaft I cut on the um, metal lathe. It goes in my roto zip. It's quarter inch. Uh, I cut a slit in it. I fold some paper over, roll it up, and wet it, put it in, and let it whip around. You gotta go slow, and you just, <clears throat> you know, get everything nice and hit with it. And you start out with rough, and then a little you know, finer and finer until you get to what you want. So this is how I did the inside of that port to get all the rough crap off. I started out with like 120 grit. And I think I threw some 300 in there and then this is 440. So, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, the other one I put down, I think it was some 800 when I finished. And that's how I did the surface, the mating surface of the manifold. I put it on a piece of granite I have out in the garage and you wet it and just rub it in circles until the piece is nice and flat. I mean, you go slow. Don't push on it. You know, you don't want to like push against this. The metal will hit. But that's how you get a nice, clean deal. That's how a lot of professional people do it with cars and everything. All right. All right. So, I got that nice and flattened. You can still see a little bit on the edge there, but those were pretty deep, so. But anyways, I cleaned this all out. And this side was all messed up. So, I ended up doing was using a milling bit and running it down it. Until I just cut right through all the stuff. Um, that is actually a ledge because it goes up higher than where I drilled through. But yeah, I just set it up, put it in the milling machine, and slowly creeped it down until I cut all the way through. So it's nice and clear now. Got rid of the uh, casting burrs on this. And this is all nice and flat. So let's mount it up and see what we got. All right, so here's where we're at. I just wanted to explain why. And the other day this leaked, by the way, this thing vibrated free. I put a lock nut and just the same size bolt with the original nut on there, just to uh, keep this from uh, vibrating free again. But in doing that, I realized something. They cut these slits all the way around. And that's so you could crush this thing onto the pipe. The pipe 
actually <laughs> was about two millimeters short going in. I think I said a millimeter before, but it was two millimeters short of just passing these things. And when I say that, so I cut this back three millimeters and beveled it so that I can slide this all the way in nice and tight up against that ridge in there. So it goes just by those things and sits nice and flat. So um, I believe you could put an O-ring in there. Just because, so, I mean, maybe that's what they were intending. Put an O-ring and push it in and, well, I don't know. But, you know, this was all crapped out. A typical Chinese. -y. So, anyways, this sits. Let me see if I could do this one here. Hmm, probably not. Yeah, I can't do it one-handed. See if I can. Yep. Okay. There we go. But now my carp sits all the way in past those little slots. So it's bottomed out nice and tight. So, anyways, alright. That was my fix to the air leak with the slots.